everybody. How are you guys all doing? Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thank you for writing. Oh my God. Show that always keeps on toes. How do you do it? Oh my God. I'm gonna give you this potato as a gift. Um, with extreme pleasure and gratitude is how I do it. I feel so privileged that we arrived at a time in the zeitgeist where the fandom was ready for this kind of show. They got what I was trying to do with my crazy brain and like everyone in this industry, I wasn't sure it was going to work, but it's just such a gift. I'll get it. I'll talk to them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, season three is great. Yeah. She's trying to get out <laughs> um, um, It is a privilege. It is a privilege. It's a dream project. I feel like the good thing and the bad thing is I'm not sure I'll ever be able to top it. So I guess I'll just have to keep making this if y'all let me. Okay. And you're amazing keeping up with the fans, especially Oh, thank you. How difficult was that for you, though, because you don't want to give away spoilers, right. but you want to keep them engaged? Well, it's easy for me because it's the most magnificent pro um, procrastination tool of all time. So when I should be doing other things, I'm like, oh, I got to go on Twitter and make some really bad haikus. Uh, but... Um, it's hard. I don't worry so much about spoilers, just about as the fandom grows, it's going to change. And like, look, we're not all perfect all the time in social media. And the danger is you're going to say something you regret or whatever. But I feel like this fandom has become this just incredible beast of built on kindness and inclusivity and diversity. So like, and I feel like people mostly get my sense of humor. And we just wouldn't be here at Table 2 in San Diego in third season without the fans. So again, I feel like if they'll have me, I don't mind. We're all kind of in it together. The show is our show, if that makes sense. Yeah. Oh, I like them all, but like, it's so boring. But I love my girl. I love mine on Earth. Like, I just cannot believe that Mel what Melanie could do with her mouth. Definitely print that too out of context. <laughs> um, like, I just can't believe that she can say the jokes that are in my brain so quickly and that she can turn on a dime. Like, she's just such a pleasure to write for because she feels so three-dimensional. But I like them all and they're always surprising me. Now I feel like I have the privilege of what I like is putting together odd combinations of characters and being like, what are these two going to be like together in a B-plot? It's so weird, right? Like, I just feel like they're really starting to be established in my head and so hopefully, hopefully that comes through this time. Thank you. Yes, the sexy fog. Yes, exactly. Is that going to continue through the season? I. Yeah, 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 exactly. The, the sexy smog, or the sexy folk, sorry, I'm not a one time deal. But um, I do think the show has never looked better this year. We have this incredible director of photography called Gavin Smith. He is a genius. We have um, Alberta, Canada, which is just like worth millions as far as free scenery. We got these new fancy lenses. I have no idea what they're called on the camera, but the show looks incredible. There are some truly beautiful, beautiful episodes coming up. You know, we're going to have to make the cast look good looking, but we're going to do our best with work with what we got. Um, so yeah, I'm really proud of the way the show looks this year. Next episode in particular, number two, is one of the most ambitious episodes we've ever done, and it's so cinematic. It's really beautiful. So, yeah. so you said it never looked better. Is there something in particular that you're really looking forward for fans to see? Right. There's lots I'm really nervous about, to be honest. Um, I know you're like, oh, <laughs> um, unlike past seasons, which is just natural, I feel like there's something in every episode that makes me cry. There's something in every episode that makes me almost pee my pants laughing, professionally, professionally. And then there's one big gasp cliffhanger moment. Um, I would say the next two episodes are really interesting. We're doing something we've never really done before. And then I would say mid-season there's some big shockers and then I just finished editing the finale and it's beautiful and I'm really proud of it. So no, I try to live by episode by episode, but really there's something in every episode I'm really proud of and excited for the year first to see. Did you always know this is the season to bring in Mama Earth? 
was that a plan all along? Uh, yes, I think so. I mean, I think if Mel hadn't been pregnant, I might have done it at the end of last season, like even earlier. But um, the pregnancy was just such a magnificent storyline. It was a challenge that turned out to be such a blessing for the show. Um, so yes, things are mostly going according to plan. Yes, crazy plan. What's one of the craziest like fan theories that you've heard? Oh my God, great question. I have to tell you, I will never admit it to anyone but you, so you guys don't listen. But um, yes, thank you. Sometimes I think the fan theories are so great. I'm like, I actually kind of wish we had done that. You know what I mean? One of the craziest fan theories I ever heard was that Waverly is Winona's daughter. Like something about the past. You know this, uh, the episode where Winona goes to the past and she tells Bobo that her name is Waverly and he's like, you're my angel and I'll never forget. So I saw all these people at all these graphs and timelines where they were like, the baby's going to grow up to be Waverly. And I was like, I'm not good enough at math to make that work, guys. So good luck. <laughs> but I was like, you're in it and I like it. So thank you so much, you guys. Enjoy the rest of your con, okay?